Hello, everybody. My name is Jared Weathers. I am your co-host. I'm not the host for this show. I did want to come on first and say, if you're not listening to us on the podcast network, please do that. We're on our radio. Uh, but without further ado, let me welcome you to your host, uh, Master G. What's up, man? How are you? Hey, you know how it does. How you doing today? I'm doing all right. I every time I do a podcast, I always feel like I'm Conrad Thompson. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, you know. Well, let me let me tell you this real quick. It's pretty funny because I was expecting to do the intro completely. So when you started off, I'm a little I'm a little taken aback. I'm a little little flustered here. Gotta gotta get my bearings back. That's right. You said this is Master G's show. This is the game room. We did an episode. Um, <sighs> Long wow, time long time ago. Uh, probably time ago. definitely an over a year. No, under a year ago. I would say over, under a year ago because um, yeah. around the pandemic, we were we were hot. We were on fire. We were doing, doing everything. Yeah, oh, my God. Movies, sports, games. <laughs> but it's time to focus on one area again. We're going back to games, all right? Game Room was a lot of fun for me last year, and we talked about a few things. We talked about my memories and a lot of fun stuff, but the important thing is that we need to talk about is how is your gaming going right now? What are you playing? What are you playing right now? Hold on. Oh, Hold on. Oh, I oh. gotta get, a, gotta get my branding shirt on real quick. He wasn't ready. There we go. Okay. There you go. Okay. What are you playing um, right now? Uh, right now, i uh, playing a lot of GTA, honestly. A lot, lot GTA. of GTA 5. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, great point. Let's talk about that. You know, <laughs> there's rumors going rampant around Grand Theft Auto, whether it be six, whether it be the next updates of online. What do you think? What do you, what what is your feeling about Grand Theft Auto right now? Um, they're running it into the ground right <laughs> now. Um, announcing that after the PS5 was announced and the Xbox X, the Series X was announced. They're like, oh yeah, we're gonna bring GTA Five to the new station. It's like, guys, stop it! Like, there's no need for this. Somewhere, somewhere in his dungeon, Todd Howard's like, yes, another group of people are doing my thing. Yeah. Um, no, here's here's a here's a little fact. This is crazy. So, you realize that in the span, the span of time that GTA Five has been out, we've had six Grand Theft Autos released on previous generations. Mm. Meanwhile, we're sitting here with GTA 5 like, yeah, this game's great. Yes. Woo. Can't wait. <laughs> I'm going to get my new new yacht. <laughs> I get one. Anyways, um, no, I enjoy Grand Theft Auto 5 just as much as the rest, uh, rest of um, America. But America. <laughs> in all seriousness, it's time to stop. It's if if you want to keep going with GTA Online as a separate entity, I'm totally fine with that. I'm completely fine with that. Yeah. But GTA Five is literally three people that was done in like two weeks. If you you know wanted to play it nonstop or not nonstop. Yeah. Um, and I'm ready for more story. Yeah. Um, I am currently playing Black Ops Cold War. Mm. Um, let me tell you something. My my history of Call of Duty is vast. I've played every year in some way, shape, or form, and uh, that started way back on the 360 back in 2006, 2007, um, with remember. the release. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. With with the release of Call of Duty Two. So I, and we're not talking about Modern Warfare Two for you. Uh, you young kids out there. We're talking about the original Call of Duty 2. There was like a cut and paste multiplayer of like 6v6. No no perks. No leveling system. It's just jump in, play a couple rounds, try to be the best in the leaderboard in that specific game. But moving on, I've played every year and no, and I mean this, no Call of Duty has ever sucked me into multiplayer more than Cold War these days i don't know what it is but i am sitting here as your champion with seven prestige on my way to eight in about six levels which i'll probably do today 
Um, I'm already almost done. Let me let me let me let me rephrase that. I'm already this close to completing the second battle pass, which just came out three days ago. <laughs> I am rocking Cold Wars to the to the apple bottom jeans, okay? Um, <laughs> and I, I'm enjoying it. If there's any game that you should jump into that's not, you know, GTA, you should try Cold War because they got cross-play. And regardless if I'm playing on, uh, on PlayStation, regardless if I'm playing on Xbox, regardless if I'm playing on PC, like, we can do this game. I have it. There you go. We should play that. We yeah, should we definitely should. play. Um, I'll carry you. Don't worry. Good. Yeah, I suck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of this. Uh, we talked a little bit about our what we're playing right now. Mm-hmm. Let's talk a few things newsworthy. All right. Um, since game room hasn't been going on for very long, we got to talk about the biggest points. And one thing that's been still going on, surprisingly still going on, is CD Projekt Red's misstep. We'll call it a misstep. Sure, yeah. With Cyberpunk 2077. Now, I personally, I'm going to go straight in for this this uh, topic. I bought Cyberpunk when it came out, and I played it on the Series X. So already I had a leg up with the competition, and I'm I'm telling you i if my camera if i had a camera i would be pinky up promising you that i did not see nearly as many bugs as people were seeing at the launch so for me cyberpunk was working i didn't have much issues right well i think that's because you had the the new system Right. Whereas everybody else is still playing on the, the previous ones. Right. So that being said, my personal opinion of Cyberpunk is going to be vastly different from someone running it on an Xbox One or an Xbox One X or even a PC. My opinion is going to be different because I did not see nearly as many problems as it is. That being said, I've seen the problems personally. They're hilarious. <laughs> They're ridiculously funny, um, and a lot of people hate it. A lot of people hate it, and I don't. I don't understand the hate. CD Projekt Red has. They have proven throughout their career that they pride themselves on quality. Mm-hmm. Not many people remember this, and I'm going to bring this up before I let you talk about CD Projekt Red. Sure. Is Witcher Three's launch wasn't that much better. They don't do well with launch games. They fix them either immediately or over time to make it the best game ever. If you would have played Witcher 3 when it launched, you would understand why Cyberpunk runs the way it is. What do you think about it? Um, well, cause I didn't buy it, um, yeah. which I, I know I've explained to you before, but I'm going to explain to everybody else right here. Um, <clears throat> for me, it didn't look that interesting. Um, which I which I got game shamed for last year, um, which I'm still kind of mad about. It's the biggest game. Yeah, uh, not not in my opinion, it's not. <laughs> but I have seen the issues. Uh, there's a streamer I watch, uh, Pink Pistol ninety two, I think is her is her Twitch handle, um, and uh, her game glitched. It like it lagged. Um, it, it didn't look good. I think she was running off a of PC mm-hmm. and it just, it didn't look good at all. And, yeah. uh, I've seen, you know, I would see the memes and everything about it. Mostly of Keanu, uh, looking, looking mm-hmm. like he, you know, he did back in the matrix days. Mm-hmm. Uh, still does. <laughs> still does. Still does. J- just with a beard. now. <laughs> he doesn't have that baby face, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I I don't I don't know them firsthand. I didn't buy the game myself, which I'm kind of mm-hmm. glad about. Um, right. Not only that, it, I didn't find it interesting, but also because of all the issues that people are having on these you know last systems, which you can see in the background right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I I it's not a game I'm gonna buy anyway. But well, honestly, I feel for you on that one myself. Um, 
I actually haven't played the game since launch week. Like I, I, I got pretty bored of it. And then, and that's not, it's not the bugs, not the glitches. That's not even the hate that, that influenced me. It's, it's the style of game. Um, I rarely like can get sucked into a game. That's a first person RPG, like fallout and uh, Skyrim. Um, and it's crazy to me because now we're going to go a little bit into the memories, yeah. <laughs> just a little bit. We're going to dip into the memories. We'll go back to news. Don't worry. Of course. But I, uh, oh, I did it with Call of Duty. So why am I apologizing yeah, right. for it? <laughs> it's my thing. <laughs> it's what I do. Um, so the whole show, is, uh, the whole show is based around is memories. Yeah, I I picked up um, Elder Scrolls Oblivion, Oblivion. So we're talking launch three sixty. Um, I picked that up in like 2008 um, because my friend let me borrow it. He's like, yeah, I don't really, uh, I don't really care for this. I popped that disc in and I proceeded to drop about 100, 150 hours into it over the course of a couple months because, you know, me, I'm a busy guy. But for me, a game like that, that's ridiculous. I, I can't believe I put that much time into it, but I'm happy because I love Oblivion. And then not mu- not longer after that, I went to my GameStop. I don't remember I don't remember who it was, and I'm glad I don't remember who it is who it is because I won't name drop it here uh, because this one still pisses me off to this day. I walk up to my GameStop counter. I'm like, "What's Fallout Three? And he's like. Well, it's it's kind of complicated. It's kind of, and I stopped him. I was like, "All I need you to tell me, all I want you to tell me, is that it's Oblivion with guns." And he goes, "No, it's not like that at all." No. no. <laughs> so guess what? I didn't play it for a year. I didn't play it for a year because that guy, that GameStop employee, told me, "Nah, it's nothing like that," making me feel like I won't like it. So I remember a year later. Um, it was like eight bucks for the base Fallout Three title. It was eight bucks. I picked it up, put that disc in, started playing. You know what I said? What? This is exactly like Oblivion with guns. <laughs> <laughs> and I took that game. I put the disc back in the in the in the case. I took it back to that GameStop guy and I gave it back to him. I was like, I want to return this. And I want to buy that new game of the year edition that has all the DLC on it because yo ass last year told me that this wasn't oblivion with guns. And let me tell you, sir, it is. Let <laughs> me like, tell oh. you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your manager? Anyways. Um, so back then I was really into it. Like I, I played through fallout three. I played through all the DLC. I played through oblivion. I played through all the DLC and then I bought Skyrim. The, the Holy Grail, if you will, you know, everyone's favorite game, you know, the, the, oh God, you buy it 17 times like Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> you you want to know how much time I've put into Skyrim? Uh, 2000 hours. I don't know. I have bought it six times. Jesus Christ. And combined, combined all six times I have played four hours. Wow. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's different, but I couldn't get into Skyrim. Mm. Now we fast forward to, to 2017, 2018, and Fallout 4 came out. Now me, I'm same thing. I'm like, oh my god, Fallout 3 was so much fun. I can't wait to play that. Bought that game, three hours. Mm. I bought Witcher 3, two and a half hours. See, it's getting smaller. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. So... Fast forward to Cyberpunk, and it sounds great. We're, we're going up to the release. I'm a little bit nervous that it might be overhyped, and boy, it was for a different reason, <laughs> yeah. sadly. But I'm like, all I want is to be able to get into this game because I, I know I have the capability to play a game like this. I've done it. I've done it back 10 years ago, almost 15 now. I know I can do it. Did I do it? Hey, I played seven hours of it. Woo! That's an improvement. That's an improvement. And I haven't played it since. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, having played the game, I will 
stamp my approval of you should still play the game. Um, however, still to this day, if you have a base Xbox One or a base PS4 or even an Xbox One S or a slim PS4, don't buy it. Rent it. Go to your nearest Blockbuster, Redbox. Don't look at me like that. Blockbuster? Uh, yeah, you know, Blockbuster. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 the one all the way up in Alaska. Yeah. 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 Or your nearest family video. Um, soon, soon, <laughs> soon will be extinct as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just give it a try. Um, but know this. Um, if, you, if you're running an Xbox One X, uh, PS4 Pro, or the newest systems, if you're lucky enough to have one of those, or both, um, you'll have a little bit more of a smoother time. You have a little more of a fun time. You'll have a little bit more of what CD Projekt Red was going for. And I am saying here with my final thought about it, don't throw them in the grave just yet. They're working on it. Now, that being said, we're going to move on. Sure. Now, I know as a GameStop employee, spoilers, guys, <laughs> You shop with me almost regularly, I would say. Yeah. And about two years ago, maybe three now, I talked you into a game because you gave me a little, little, little sprinkle of salt and pepper in my head to let me know that you're a big fan of Lego Star Wars. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're going to talk a little bit about Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga because we're still getting bits and pieces of the puzzle. We got a little bit of gameplay what I would say about six months ago. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. It was supposed to release six months ago, mm -hmm. thanks to Pandemic, mm -hmm. the uh, Backstreet Boys reunion tour. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, are you still excited as much as, 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 as long as it's been? Are you still excited? I... <laughs> This is probably gonna sound really stupid. I am really excited. I yeah. like. I haven't been more excited for a game. I th I think except for this new wrestling game coming out. Mm -hmm. Um, Retro Mania. I think I think that's what it is. Yeah. No, is it? Yeah. It's the one with all the independent wrestlers. Yeah. Retro yeah. Mania. Yep. Yeah. I've that. Those are the only two games I've been this excited for for a you know extended amount of time. Mm -hmm. Um. But I, I do I do want to touch on something. I didn't want to okay. interrupt you. You're um, good, buddy. The only experience I had with Fallout ah. was New Vegas, and I hated that game so much, I didn't buy any Fallout game until 4 came out. It's funny that you <laughs> mention that, because New <laughs> Vegas is also my least favorite Fallout game, and it's I don't know what bad. it is. Um, my, my roommate, uh, he still wants, cause I, cause I still own it. I'm a collector. I still have a copy of new Vegas hanging around. Yeah, He's like one of these nights, I want you to pop that disc in and I will sit next to you and I will help you get through the beginning because apparently, and I don't know how far you've gotten into it. Cause I know I'm in the same boat. I don't know. <laughs> Once you get to the, the fictional city of new Vegas, that's actually when the game like kicks into overdrive and starts sucking you in. I never, I never could get to that because my ADHD brain is like, I want to explore. I want to do stuff. So I get, I get thrown in the middle of the, uh, the desert mm -hmm. and it tells me go whichever way you want, but also make your way over here. And I'm like, Ooh, hotel. <laughs> I get over here. There's a couple items there, and I get I get like two feet past there. There's like a decrepit, uh, if I remember if I remember correctly, like a roller coaster park, and then I just stop playing. <laughs> I don't make it to New Vegas, so that's he's like you got to give it another chance, and I'm and I will at some point because maybe that's what I need. Maybe I need to play him in order. I loved Fallout Three, I just didn't care for New Vegas. Yeah. Um. I, yeah, I got I got I got to a town and then it wouldn't let me do anything except for like walk around and talk to people and I'm like, hey, what are you doing? They're like, don't yeah. talk to me. I'm like, what I want to talk to you. Whatever. Where where should I go? So that I, I like put it down and I never play it again. Yeah. <laughs> like this is stupid. Yeah. No, it's it's definitely an acquired taste. Yeah. Um 
Yeah, feel free, like, because I, I talk a lot. You can tell that. That's that's why you wanted me to host for you. Right. Um, just raise your hand, and I'll, I'll call on you if you need to really, you know, say something. I'm cool with that. Um, I feel like I'm in school again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't you, go to the bathroom. You, you in the back. <laughs> you, you can't go to the bathroom. Sorry. We're locked in. Um, I think I okay. got a can. Thing, by the way, not sponsored. It, it's super good, though. I gotta be honest. Yeah. Um. <laughs> energy with a hint of cotton candy and a taste of racism. Anyways, um. <laughs> you can it, you can really feel that racism aftertaste. Yeah. Yeah. Where's your Where's your uh, Where's your Confederate hat? I know it's ah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Look straight at it. Anyways, <laughs> so I am not going to shame you uh, even in a little bit because um, I'm the one that that really talked to you about Lego Star Wars, uh, Skywalker, Skywalker Saga, because I've, I, as a kid, I, I started playing Lego games, and I'm sure you did too. Oh, yeah. And it's it's a fun part. Like I still, as a GameStop employee, still recommend. Lego Star Wars, uh, Lego games in general, yes. to any ages. You just started playing games. Play Lego. Well, yeah. Why? Well, because it's super simple, but it can get complicated if you want to do completionist stuff. You can look through levels. You can, or you could just blast through the game and play the story and see the credits and go, "Oh my god, I beat this game." You know, it's it's perfect for any age, any style of of. Uh, gamer in my opinion yeah um but i'm still looking forward to that game if you haven't heard about it um lego star wars skywork saga is going to feature all nine main line star wars games or movies uh in game form and uh which means for the first time we'll see uh last jedi and um rise of skywalker um in game form yeah yeah um yeah, I, I'm still excited for it. I, I'm sad only because they've been working so hard and so long on Lego Star Wars uh, Skywalker, Skywalker Saga that I am disappointed. And I'll explain why I'm disappointed. My favorite thing about Lego games is to find out what the next one is. Yeah. It really, like, when they hinted in Lego Marvel Avengers that they were going to do The Hobbit. I was like, that's exciting. <laughs> Give that to me. They put little hints in, in some of their Lego games, like their, you know, like their Marvel Studios. Um, and and it's just, it's fun. It's fun. If you haven't played Lego games, please do yourself a favor. You want my, my advice? Pick anything that's your favorite thing. Pick anything. You love Harry Potter? They got a Lego game about it. You like Jurassic World? They got a Lego game about it. You Marvel fan or a DC fan? They got a Lego game about it. Anything you really want to give a shot that you're a fan of? You like Indiana Jones? They got they got a Lego game of that. They 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 do they do. They do. Even the best Indiana Jones movie ever made, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. True. Yeah. Um, I, I think I saw that one in theaters too. I did not get a chance to see that in theaters, and I'm kind of sad because I would have loved to see that in theaters. <laughs> I, I think that's why I like it so much because I actually saw it on the big screen. I'm like, this is cool. I was also a stupid kid, but I'm like, this is cool. I understand if you want to shut the stream off right now as a viewer uh, because we are shooting from the hip here. We are both actual fans of uh, Crystal Skull. I'm, I'm not even joking. I yeah. love that movie. I, I I actually really enjoy that movie, and I <laughs> I personally get offended when someone hates it so much. Same. Same. <laughs> like, okay, I get it. It's not to the great quality that is the original trilogy, but it's still a good movie. It is. Like, okay, like... It's actually like based, like they're all kind of based in like a little bit of reality with like mm-hmm. a lot of nonsense thrown in. Mm-hmm. But like the crystal skulls are actually like based in mythology mm-hmm. from Mexico, so it's yep. it's not like it's like completely out of there. I mean, it's nope. it's based on something, you know. No, that could never happen. Okay, well, why don't you log into a computer anytime you want and just look up conspiracy theories, and I'm yeah. sure you could figure out that. 
not only is this based in reality, but there are people that believe this is a real like like they are looking for these things. Yeah. They exist, people. Anyways, sorry, tangent. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about games, not movies. Uh, yeah. any- <laughs> okay, that kind of ends one a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah. So we're gonna swipe the swipe the um, the counter off. We're gonna clear off our counter here of uh, Lego Star Wars, CD Projekt Red, Call of Duty. We're gonna move on. We're gonna talk about Retromania because yeah. you brought it up. I'm excited. Um, Retromania, if you haven't heard about this, is an independent game made with the original style of WrestleFest. Mm-hmm. Which, if you've never played WrestleFest and you're a wrestling fan and you're a gaming fan, you have got to play WrestleFest. Is it the best wrestling game of all time? No, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like he was saying, uh, Retromania is going to have uh, independent wrestlers, uh, fake wrestlers, and also, um, I believe, oh, they added someone into it. It wasn't New Japan. Was it Impact? They mm-hmm. added... I, I can't remember who they added in. Um, sorry, I don't know everything. Um, you should. But, but they added real wrestlers into it that you wouldn't expect. They had a Martian Thrasher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like they, they are. It's. It almost looks like a better Legends of Wrestling. Yeah. And I like that series too. I never got to play the third game, but um, I played one and two, and and it 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 it's it's. It itched the scratch, the scratch the itch. It did the, what I needed it to do, and that was play a wrestling game with legends. And Retro Mania just looks more like that. As long as it's not as difficult as Fire Pro Wrestling World, holy crap, that game is hard. <laughs> I I regret buying that game. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, I don't like yeah, it. It's got Kenny Omega on the front and because Kazuchika it, Okada. It does, but I thought it was going to be a lot different. Than what mm-hmm. it is, and I'm like, this is just way too much for me. It's it's hard to believe that that is the most popular wrestling game of all time series. Let me rephrase that series, um, yeah. based out of Japan. And I I bought it for PC as well because they had a sale on it for like 15 oh. bucks. Um, and I and I plugged my controller in, and I had the exact same reaction as I did the first time I got it for PS4. Is man, these controls are hard to master. Yeah. Um, it's not like a 2K game where you can just jump in and you're gonna choke slam the big show. Sorry, I can't talk about him. Anyways, um, it's, it's Paul White now, sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Retro Mania is coming out, I believe, uh, this week or next week for all consoles, and I highly suggest that you pick it up as a wrestling fan, um, or a sports fan. Now, speaking of sports fans. Uh, this revelation happened about a month or two ago, and that is MLB The Show is coming to Xbox. This is crazy to me. We're talking about a 15-year series that has been exclusive and built by Sony, and it's coming to Xbox. Now, I don't know about you. I'm not the biggest baseball fan. Like I'll, I'll play a baseball game. I will play. I'll go to my local uh, baseball team game and I'll watch a game, but I can't sit there on TV and go, woo, he hit the ball. Woo, they're yeah. running. I can't do it. However, I can sit down and enjoy a baseball game because I know the fundamentals. I know I hit ball, make it go far, get home run, get score. You know, I yeah. pitch, I try to make him miss my ball. I get it. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's just it's it's crazy to me that they're releasing on the Xbox. What do you think about that? I I honestly thought they were already on the Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize that they weren't. It's it's funny because if you uh, if you pull up um, you look on your computer and you pull up the cover art for um, for MLB the Show on Xbox, um, it actually has in the lower right corner. PlayStation Studios because it's made by Sony. Oh. Now, this is what upsets me is not many people know this, but Minecraft is actually owned by Microsoft. Yeah. If you yeah. So, if it releases on PlayStation or if it releases on Switch, it has on the 
back of the cover, Microsoft Studios on it. Not the front, because, you know, they don't care. Yeah. They are, they're not advertising it that it's a Microsoft game. So for me, I'm a little biased. You know, I'm an Xbox player, uh, but I own a PlayStation and I still, I'm, I still play my PlayStation, so it's not like I'm that biased. However, when you do this kind of dirty, I'm a dick, uh, I'm better than you advertising, it kind of pisses me off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I know it's made by Sony. You know it's made by Sony. You didn't know it was on an Xbox. Uh, it, you didn't know that it wasn't on an Xbox, but you know now. <laughs> um, I do. <laughs> Why? 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 Why brand that as your game? Like, it, it, uh, here's here's a here's a little fact, and I love right. I love I love pulling up these facts. Did you know, as of 2015, 2016, Microsoft has been trying. I want you to sit back and think about this. They have been trying. To give Sony the Halo Master Chief Collection to run on PlayStation. Really? Yes. Interesting. Sony, I did not know that actually. Yeah. Sony keeps saying no. We don't need Halo on PlayStation. We don't. Well, but yeah, I can see that. But Microsoft wants everybody to be able to play their games regardless of the system that you're playing. So Microsoft is trying to extend the proverbial um Olive branch. Olive branch, yeah. And Sony's like, get that shit out of here. No. <laughs> so who who's the asshole in this? You know? Is it Microsoft for being like, hey, you know, I want you guys to play our games? Or is it Sony for declining? Okay, all right. Well, okay, let's let's look at this from both sides, right? Yeah. Um I get where PlayStation is coming from. I mean, they have lots of exclusive games, mm-hmm. um, which, you know, PlayStation was the first, but, you know, they were before Xbox. Mm-hmm. So they don't need the Master Chief collection of Halo, which I, I'm sure we can all understand. Um, but also, Microsoft kind of being like, hey, you're gonna you're gonna let everyone buy our game. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It 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 makes sense from a, from a marketing standpoint. Like, hey, look, now you can get it on PlayStation. But also, like, <clears throat> but PlayStation doesn't want it, right? So I don't know. It's it it, it really depends on. Obviously, I'm kind of biased because I'm a PlayStation player. But mm-hmm. well, see, here's the thing, and and. I see more gamers um, from time to time being a uh, being a worker there, um, and i i can I can count on many fingers and toes how many times I hear from a PlayStation player that's like, ah, oh, you know, the only reason why I would jump back to ha- uh, Xbox is for Halo. I remember yeah. playing Halo. I remember. Play- so, is it really? that bad to have halo on a playstation is it really the end of the world to let playstation players play one of the crowning achievements of gaming not just microsoft of gaming with halo could you imagine cross play progression playing together on a halo game on a playstation i think that's amazing that will probably never happen because Sony's a dick. <laughs> no. Well, Jesus, they, they just they just said they just uh, released information just what two, three, four months ago that they're listening to all the PlayStation parties. Mm-hmm. So yep. I mean, you know, Sony for everything good that they've done are also kind of assholes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So you know. Yeah. I I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I, I agree. That would be amazing to mm. really have that uh, uh, cross-platform, you know, party stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but again, PlayStation. For as much as I love PlayStation, I mean, it's on the TV right now. Yeah. Um, they're kind of assholes. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> they're kind of dicks. So, 
you know, it happens. <laughs> yeah, you don't need me to explain my stance on Xbox versus PlayStation leading up to PS5 and Xbox Series X because it's it, it gets downright dirty. I, I am a neutral party. I do prefer my Xbox. I do, and that's yeah. that's okay. However, I am a firm believer that you should own both. That yeah. way you can play exclusives or play play games with friends that don't have that system or that system. It is disgusting to listen and watch people fight to the nail Xbox versus PlayStation. Yeah, I agree. It's no, it's no, um, it's no hidden, hidden. It, it's not important it's not important, and and the the boss of Xbox, um, I can't think of his name right now. His name usually is on my mind all the time because he's always a guy that talks about public events and and stuff happening in gaming. Phil Spencer, there you go. Um, okay. <laughs> he is like, hey, congrats, Sony. You know, like when God of War came out. Phil Spencer went on Twitter and was like, this game is fucking awesome. I can't, like, you guys have got to get a PlayStation and play God of War. And I 100% agree. God of War is still a fantastic game to play through. But I don't see Sony doing anything like that. Uh, no. no. Not even a little bit. Not even as a tongue-in-cheek joke. They do no. nothing. No. That's true. They don't. So... If you're a Sony fan, are you a Nazi? Anyways, we're gonna hey, move hey, on. Hey, 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 we're gonna on. move on. We're gonna move on. Hail Hydra. Um, Hail Hydra. <laughs> what the hell? Let's talk about that real quick because I'm gonna gloss over this uh, this topic real quick. But let's talk about the rise and quick fall and still floundering Marvel Avengers video game. Have you played this? Okay, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. Okay. Now I, I might get canceled for this, for for this opinion I'm about to have. Um, Marvel Avengers is probably the worst game I've ever played. Really? I despise it a hundred percent. And another game I regret buying. Really? Yes, I Batman. absolutely wish I could I had a physical copy I could burn. <laughs> yeah that's how bad it is so let's let's peel the let's peel the game back um when marvel avengers got announced um the style that they were going for is they were going for a destiny style loot shooter with avengers with the very uh what what, what would i say very broken up story mode like destiny does and they were well, going they failed. They did 100% because <laughs> let me tell you something the Hulk doesn't need gauntlets. He doesn't need to be customized. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need anything that they gave him. Mm -hmm. And yet they thought that this was the most popular thing that was ever going to hit last summer. Okay. Let me tell you something it's not. Mm -hmm. Now, I will give it credit it's no anthem. And it's still going. And I would say, personally, I would suggest people play through it. Not pay full price, but play through the story mode because it's actually a pretty unique comic book style story. If you can, if you can find someone else that's playing it, if you can find a friend that's playing it, play it together because it's a little more fun when you play in co-op. Just a little bit. Play through the campaign. That's all I suggest. Don't get sucked into the... Um, uh, events, it's not worth it. Please, for the love of Christ, don't get sucked into microtransactions. <laughs> Do not, not even a little bit. Um, but I'm not going to spoil the storyline here. Um, I, I just, I want to point out that the one good thing that that game did is it has a really good story. That's it. And I am also in the same boat as yours. <laughs> I'm also in the same boat as yours. I 
have I've struggled to finish it. I don't think I've finished it. I don't want to really finish it except for the fact that I want to see the end of the story. And I don't want to spoil myself by watching someone else play it because then that's boring. I, I paid the money. Like 30 minutes of it and I'm like, this is dumb and I switched back to Fortnite or something. Uh, I'm uh, like, no, can't do it. Can we bleep out Fortnite whenever it's mentioned? Because I would, I would love that. Um, I would love that. Uh, no. no. Just no. every time, just edit it out. Just act like you're saying fucking or something. Listen, listen. Yeah. Okay. All right. I need something I can just get lost into, and that's the game I can get lost into. I can't do that with GTA. I got to be focused on GTA. I got a funny story for you. Oh, um, going back to Cold War, they just dropped. Um, they just dropped a zombie style. Like big map, um, almost yeah. like Warzone, uh, game mode called Outbreak, um, and it, it's actually pretty cool. Like I've been playing a lot of it. It's very long. It's very long. See, we got another agreed per, uh, person about bleeping to- it out. Tony agrees, of course. Tony agrees. Unsurprising. Uh, how's Tony doing asshole. today? Okay, all right. Two different. <laughs> Two different spaces there. How's Tony doing? <laughs> he's an asshole. Anyways. That's right. That's how, that's how he's doing. He's, he's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so with Outbreak mode, yeah. um, it's it's heavily influenced by Battle Royale. Now, yeah. Outbreak for Zombies for Cold War has no uh, PvP. It's just PvE. But uh, Warzone, obviously, is Battle Royale with zombies in it now. So I'm trying to get my um, my significant other into Warzone because um, big Fortnite fan, and I want to break break that hard. I want to break that very hard sure. to get out of it. Um, so we played Warzone. <laughs> Shout out. Anyways, um, we played Warzone for the first time. And I like I give so much flack. I'm like, oh, you're the battle royale master. You play Fortnite. You're gonna jump. In. You're gonna do this. Did actually did better than me, not by <laughs> much, but actually did better better than me. However, there was this one game that we played. We dropped in. I got killed immediately. I want to say I got killed immediately. Nice. And was on on the way to pick me back up. Was getting ready to pick me back up. Got cornered by three guys and turned around after dying, looked me in the face and went, you can't build in this one. I'm like, yeah, I accidentally pressed the button to build (laughs) and it didn't build, Brandon. I'm like, yeah, 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 you you can't do that. That's right. (laughs) You can build a wall. (laughs) You can build a wall with your little... um, Riot shield, but other than that, like you no, 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 you can't. So that's a funny story for today. Um that is, that's play cold war. <laughs> play play cold war. Actually, so uh I did want to yeah. mention yeah, um the game of the wrestling game I was talking about was the wrestling code, virtual basements wrestling game they're making. Oh, I see, and I have not heard about that. Um what belt, anyways. What belt? Um Oh, you want me to get my belt? I'll get my belt. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll give him I'm sure you'll give him that belt, the one that's wrapped around your pants holding them up right now. Mm-hmm. You're gonna whip him. Anyways. Boom. Anyway. Uh so <laughs> Virtual Basement is making a wrestling game called the Wrestling Code. Okay. Um it will have matches like a gauntlet match, slobber knocker, lumberjack, first blood, I quit, all these ones that WWE doesn't have. Exploding um, barbed wire match. Definitely not that one. That'll be the <laughs> AEW game. <laughs> definitely be in the AEW game. Um, they have a virtual basement game has like uh, Dalton Castle. Mm. Um, hold on, I'm trying, trying to look at the roster here. They, they 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 announced some of it, not all of it, but some of it. Um, so far, uh, I know it's like Dalton Castle. Oh, here we go. Um, Beer City Bruiser, uh, uh-huh. Connor and Victor from uh, WWE. Not going by those names anymore. 
uh, Bull James Cheeseburger, who doesn't go by that anymore. Really? I didn't know that. I'll have to yeah, look into that. Yeah, he, yeah, he changed his name. Um, Grim from Grim Story Show is going to be on it. Uh, hmm. I don't know why. <laughs> it's, it's weird. Um, Jeff Cobb, Kenny King, JTG making his return uh, nice. to wrestling games. Yeah. Um, I think they're going to have Shad in here, too. I was about to say, at least they have one of them coming back. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Shad Gaspar, uh, obviously, you know, he passed away. Um, very, very sad still. It's mm-hmm. very hard to talk yeah. about him. Uh, Zach Gowan's going to be in the match or in the in the game as well. well that's going to be hard to code. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's gonna he's gonna show up halfway. <laughs> Jesus, guys, we're gonna go to hell. Uh, uh, Matt Taven, Matt Sidell, uh, Leo Rush, man, I'm excited for Leo Rush, man. No wrestling game is ever going to be complete without the greatest wrestler ever, Maven. We need Maven in a game again. Is Maven even a wrestler anymore? Probably not. He got hit so hard <laughs> upside the head with that chair shot that Undertaker gave him and was just out. I yeah. retire. Yeah, true. <laughs> true. I want to be a wrestler so bad. No, you don't, boy. No, oh, you oh don't. God. <laughs> uh, oh, the Bushwhacker is going to be in that game, too. Uh the the original Bushwhackers, not the WWE version, the hardcore wrestlers are going to be. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. But yeah uh, th- there's a lot of people going to be in this one. Alex Shelley, um, mm. you know, that's pretty cool. Bull James, definitely, yeah. definitely not the game that I was thinking of. I thought it was, I thought it was Retromania, which is still a good game that you should check out personally. Are we really doing promos on a gaming show? Uh, that- apparently. Apparently, is that, yeah. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to move on to uh, to memories uh, specifically. Um, we're not going to jump into another game. Um, we will we will have more news for you. I have one I have one more topic that I want to talk about before the ending of the show. Um, cuz we're we're getting close to the hour mark. Oh yeah. Uh, let's talk about memories. Okay. Now this might be uh, this might be a hard uh, topic. I might change the topic, but because I'm so into Call of Duty right now, do you have a great memory of playing Call of Duty? Whether it be campaign, multiplayer, buying it from the corner store, what 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 do you remember? What's your greatest memory of Call of Duty? Um, <laughs> this is gonna sound so bad. Oh, no. So so when I bought Modern Warfare Two for the first time, there you go. Um. I never knew about the uh, the no Russian mission. No one told me about it. Oh! So when I got to it, I I actually I didn't get it when it came out. So I got it like a few months after it came out, which mm-hmm. they took it back and re put in the uh, and they put in the uh, do you want to play this mission mm-hmm. uh, section. And uh, well, I didn't know about it. I'm like, oh yeah, dude, whatever. Like it was gonna have bad words or something in it. Yeah, oh, that's stupid. And then, <laughs> little to my knowledge, um, if you don't know about this, this is gonna take a really weird turn. Oh yeah. But I'm like, oh, what does it have the f word in it? Ooh. Yeah. I'm, yeah, it's a stupid kid. I'm like, yeah, let's play, let's do it. And then all you hear is Makarov saying. No Russian kept alive. I'm like, what? What are we doing? Get off the <laughs> elevator. You're at an airport. I'm like, oh, we're going somewhere. Then all of a sudden, everyone starts shooting. I'm like, oh god, here we go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was very odd. Um, but that's, that's probably like one of my favorite memories, which is kind of <laughs> weird. But <laughs> hindsight is 2020. Did you know? You probably know now. You know, it's been over 10 years since that game came out. Yeah. You did you know that you don't actually have to shoot in that? Yeah. Yeah, you can choose not to. Yeah, but most people, you know, tapped into their internal rage and was like, "Yeah, I'll kill every person." Yep. You probably, you probably went back to that coffee shop for the guy that was hiding, didn't you? Well, I, I will now, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I will now, though. Yep. Um, that's that. That's pretty good. I remember. Yeah, I remember that was a big controversial thing. 
And yeah. uh, little do do people know they were trying to top that in um in last year's or or now two years ago's modern warfare which they didn't um i understand what they tried to do they were trying to do the um i can't remember the actual name of it but the uh the the highway of death in uh, iraq um that was supposed to be really controversial but me personally I didn't have any feeling to it. I didn't, it didn't bother me. Like if you want to, if you want to shock me, if you want to, if you want to make me go, Ooh, I shouldn't play this. Let's do Vietnam, like legitimate Vietnam, or let's do, let's do war crimes. Let's do something that makes you feel like I should not be doing this. Like the no Russian mission. Exactly. Yeah. And because you know that Call of Duty has to, ha- they have to do something to stay relevant. Yeah. Um, because there was a span of time there where people either didn't buy it or they bought it specifically for multiplayer, which I personally think is sad because I've, as I said earlier, I play every Call of Duty and I play through every Call of Duty campaign. You know what my most favorite uh, campaign of the last five years is? Infinite. Ghost. Infinite Warfare. Really? Yeah. I really enjoyed Infinite Warfare. You know, the the least liked Call of Duty of all time. Yeah. Add my list add, add my name to that list too. Yeah. yeah I didn't like that, that much. That campaign is fantastic. And Disagree. if you have if you haven't played the campaign, you gotta go back and play it. Disagree. You can disagree if you want to. It's my show, though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I still disagree. Um, Infinite Warfare's uh, story was weird in the beginning, but when I figured out what they were going for, here's the here's the thing. And and some people that are watching this that may have um, played Infinite Warfare or watching the the replay of this show that's played Infinite Warfare, you'll understand when I say. When they mentioned that it was supposed to be world a World War game in space, that's exactly how it feels. It feels like somebody put Call of Duty Four in low gravity or no gravity situations, and I liked it. I did. It wasn't like Black Ops Three that was futuristic for no reason. It wasn't Black Ops Four that was futuristic for no reason. It wasn't. <laughs> No, Advanced Warfare was the start of where it still felt grounded in reality. Yeah. Um, but you. yeah, so me personally, I'm still a, I'm still a passionate um, defender of Infinite Warfare um, because number number one, if you're a zombies fan, that has the most unique zombies maps ever, um, and that that compares to all the Black Ops uh, zombies. So if you're getting into zombies now. Go back to Infinite Warfare and try those zombie maps. But first, um, go to go to the World at War and try those zombie. And try the, the Nash Deer Toten. Oh yeah, I mean World I at War is where it started. Oh yeah, yeah, the best one still. Cold War is getting there. In all seriousness, Cold War is getting there because that map that map is in Cold War, uh, as renamed as Die Machine. Um, oh really? Yeah. Yep, and it's fantastic. Um, try so we are going to lead into the last topic of, uh, of today. And I thank everybody for watching so far and listening. Um, it's a big year. It's a massive year. Nintendo is going to be on top because they are celebrating two big anniversaries this year. We are celebrating the 35th anniversary of my favorite franchise, the legend of Zelda. And with a big uh, reveal yesterday, they are still celebrating the 25th anniversary of Pokemon, and they just announced the remaster, the remakes, the updated versions of Diamond and Pearl coming to the Switch later this year. Now, I don't know how much Pokemon gaming uh, you have done or still do or secretly do. We don't talk about it. Um, It's fantastic. Are you excited? So, <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. Uh, the last time I played a Pokemon game was on my three. No, I didn't have three. Yes, uh, the I, I guess it was the Nintendo Lite, mm-hmm. the DS Lite. Yep. Um, 
Oh no, no, I had a 3DS, not for very long, but I did have one. <laughs> um, I played Pokemon Platinum. That was my last Pokemon play- game I played. Ah, okay. But I liked it. I, I enjoyed it very much. Then, then you should be excited because Platinum is an offshoot, is a special edition of Diamond and Pearl, which means the last Pokemon game that you've played, they're remastering. I Think about Switch, that. Then. You might have to buy a Switch. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised you don't have a Switch, to be honest. Uh, I never really got into, into Nintendo. I don't like the Mario stuff. I'm not a huge fan of Zelda. The only thing I like is Pokemon, and even that's been really dragging for me lately. No, I understand. I get that. Um, that being said, because it's my favorite franchise, we are going to talk about a little bit about Zelda's uh, 35th anniversary. They're they're doing a little light right now. They're they're mm-hmm. I think they're trying to they're trying to plan out what they're going to do this year because let's be honest, 2020 sucked, and that was supposed to be the big deal of Mario's 35th. <laughs> But here's the craziest thing. 2020 wasn't actually the uh, the 35th anniversary. It was supposed to be 2019. Mm. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So they already kind of messed it up, and they were trying to do the best they could. And I think they did. They released uh, Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury about a month ago. Um, and whether you're a Mario fan or whether you're not a Mario fan, uh, like Jared, which is fine, you can have your own opinions, bud. It's okay. Um, I like I like the original Mario game from. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, my personal opinion is uh, 3D Land and 3D World is probably one of the most easy to get into Mario games ever, mm-hmm. ever, because it. At the end of the day, it's still point A, point B. Try to jump on top of a pole and beat a level, but it throws in the 3d plane where you can go anywhere you want around this map to get to that point b and you can do it as explorative as you want to be or you can just do it as the way you want to do and just beat the game it's fine it's cool however they also released 3d all-stars which was really cool they combined mario 64 uh sunshine which a lot of people love Sunshine. I don't know why a lot of people love Sunshine. It's not one of my favorites at all. Uh, and then Mario Galaxy, which I learned to like. Um, I had to learn to like it because Galaxy is definitely polarizing. Um, but it's now the Zelda 35th. And right now, it is the end of February, about to become March. And all they've talked about, all they've said, is Breath of the Wild 2 information is coming. And boom, we're getting Skyward Sword HD for the Switch. Now, like I said, Jared, now that you've mentioned that you're not a big fan of Zelda, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to talk a little bit about Zelda because my logo is Zelda. No, it was on the Game Boy. Huh? <laughs> what? The, 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 the last, yeah, the, the last, the first and last Zelda game I played was on the, was on the Game Boy. That's oh my god okay we gonna you're gonna have to learn today anyways yeah, let me no. give you a little bit of backstory about skyward sword skyward sword was made for the wii i'm gonna start t- uh, talking faster because i want to break this off at uh, around the hour mark for you um skyward sword was made for the wii it was very polarizing because they added motion controls to the point of one uh one what do they call it one one um, motion where you move your arm, you move the sword. However, right. it was the Wii, so it that wasn't actually that accurate. Yeah. In a game where you had to be accurate, where you swing at enemies in a specific way to kill them. That being said, a lot of people hated Skyward Sword uh, because of that. Me personally, though, I've always seen the potential for it because the storyline for Skyward Sword is that it's the origins of the Master Sword. Uh, which, if you don't know what that is, Jared, that's the cool sword that he swings. Um, <laughs> okay, gotcha. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, me personally, I have been begging anyone that would hear me, including Nintendo, for the last two years to please port Skyward Sword. So, I was... Nintendo, can you please port uh, Skyward Sword, please? Thank you. Yeah. Um, and here's the thing is that what's really cool, and, and this this might be something you could play, uh, even though you're not a Zelda fan, you could give it a shot. They're actually adding 
uh, a control scheme to it where you do not have to use motion controls at all. That's good. <laughs> so that's going to be uh, unique. And for people that really hated the motion controls, like in general, not just because they didn't work, but because they didn't want to swing their arm, you can play it without motion controls. The point that I'm trying to bring about this is this is all they've announced for the 35th anniversary mm -hmm. so far. So far, yeah. Right. And if you look at Mario, they released like three or four different games. They released merchandise. They released um, they released a special edition Switch for Mario. Like yeah. they've done so much. And here's a little secret. Zelda is actually more popular than Mario in most countries. Really? Yes. Surprising, okay. I know, but it's true. So they know Zelda is something that will sell rapidly and to rabid fans like me. So I'm going to reach into the next and final t uh, final part of uh, Master G's game room, and I'm going to predict oh, here we go. My, my predictions for the Zelda 35th anniversary is that we are going to get ports of Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD, whether it be separately at 60 bucks a piece which ouch but i'll buy it i will do it or they will combine them on one cartridge for 60 bucks total for wind waker and twilight princess because they were already remastered for the wii u i know we don't talk about the wii u but it happened and they were did great it? yeah did it happen yeah they were great ports because they were upscaled to hd and of course they used the wii u gamepad which is probably the best thing that the Wii U th ever did is they, they gave you what the switch could be yeah, or what the switch will be. Yeah. True. But that's my prediction is we are still very early in 2021, which is the official 35th anniversary year. Uh, not the fake one like Mario was last year. Um, and I think they have a lot in the barrel before, because let's be honest, what if this is it? What what if? What what how even as a fan for me and not a fan is for you, a 35th anniversary of anything. Here's one thing. Here you go. How would you feel? One thing for a 35th anniversary, I would probably have to kill somebody. Yeah. Underwhelming to say the least. Yes. Um, but we will talk more uh, in the next episode of Master G's Game Room about the Zelda. Yes? Uh, I have a prediction for the, oh. for the Skywalker saga of Lego oh. Star Wars. Oh. We won't get it until 2025. <laughs> well, you, hear, you heard it here first. If it gets delayed even more, Jared is going to be right. That's right. Um, <laughs> now, we're going to, like I said, uh, we're going to do the outro on this real quick, but yeah. um, I don't know when the next time we'll do a, a third episode because uh, I, I live a busy life and you, you have a lot of podcasts that you like to do. I don't know if you still call them podcasts or, or not anymore, but you're yeah. still doing a lot of things. You got a lot of fingers and a lot of poontang pie. Um, I stream now. Did you know that? I stream now. I, I did know that. Yeah, I did know that. I did. I'm on you Twitch now. You you won't stop talking about it. That's true. Um, plug it away there. Um, <laughs> but we will we will definitely do another episode of this at some point in mm -hmm. which we will have more news for you, more memories, more topics, and more fun. And maybe even a guest. Maybe even a guest. Maybe we'll have Shigeru Miyamoto. Can you get that? Can you get uh, that? I don't know who that is. The the. What? Uh, who is that? What? What? Shigeru Miyamoto. That's the creator of Mario, my friend. Ah, yes. I didn't know that. Okay. All right. <laughs> and that's where we're going to leave it today, guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining my uh, uh, my show here. I love talking about video games. I'm uh, appreciative that Jared uh, shares the love of video games and lets me do my thing. Of course. Jared, take it away. Um, uh, so you can find, uh, he's over here now. <laughs> I moved, I moved you a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, you can find master G on his YouTube channel. Uh, 
It's Master G, right? Yep. Or, or no, it, it, no, it's, it's Spike Nather, right? Yeah. Yep. That's mm -hmm. what it is, Spike Nather. Um, so go follow his, go subscribe to his YouTube channel. It's free. Did you guys know that? It's free on YouTube. That's amazing. Um, is there any, are you on Instagram yet? You should be on Instagram. No, I don't do Instagram. I'm not much of a social medias guy. I have a Facebook. Uh, you can, you can at me on there, bro. Um, as Listen, for plugging, <laughs> as for plugging my YouTube channel, that's a that's a conversation for another day. Um, I don't want to get into it right now because, like I said, we're doing the outro. But I would love to revisit YouTube at some point, but that um, that door is closed. So please subscribe if you enjoy listening to my sultry voice and you want to see me play video games, I have tons and tons of almost a year's worth of content on there that you can go back and watch. Uh, but at this moment, I am not making new content because of various reasons. But please support me if you can. Yes, go subscribe to him. I will link it down below after we're done here. Um, you can find me on Instagram at JaredWellersYT. Uh, obviously, you're watching this, so you this is my YouTube channel, Jerry Weathers Official. If you're watching on Twitch, uh, Jerry Weathers Official as well. Trying to get everything branded, you know, pretty close to each other. Mm -hmm. um, I guess if you want to follow me on Twitter, Jerry Weathers O on Twitter. I don't know. Um, I'm going to buy out WCW and compete against you. Damn right. <laughs> uh, um, I, I am working. I'm working on lots of different things. I'm currently working on my second part of the NFL documentary. I take a break from that, and I'm going to start working on a brand new Big Brother video because I really like doing that. Um, and of course, of course, subscribe to SVBW. That's where I do all my wrestling. Chosen one. That's where I'm currently at. Uh, so go 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 subscribe to that as well. Um, oh. Weather's Media Podcast Network is on iHeartRadio now. I hey, heard that the more that's the pretty big. It is. It's huge. It's yeah. huge. And let um, me tell you something. I'm also going to plug you on there because let me tell you something. I heard about this. He Jared's trying to keep it a secret, but for any new subscriber to uh, the Weather's Media Podcast, um, you're going to get a $19 Fortnite card. What? <laughs> Trust me, viewers are gonna uh, viewers are gonna love that. I'll show you after the show. Okay, but I don't. I don't okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm so confused now. Anyway, yeah, you should. Uh, make make sure you guys don't subscribe to him. He's a good <laughs> dude. I promise. Uh, he's he's not an asshole like I am. Uh, uh, he will be featured in the wrestling documentary I'm doing, which will come out probably next year. Since I'm doing lots of other stuff anyway. Um, and he might even show up on a stream or two. Go Maybe. follow him. Maybe. Um, never say never. True. Uh, is there anything else you want to plug for? Get out of here. Um, you know, now that we talked about the, the YouTube channel, I will plug that just a smidge because yeah. um, we did a lot of projects, a uh, lot of projects last year that either didn't pan out or they're still in the works. Um, I know you, you mentioned something about you want to feature my, my YouTube channel in a video, um, which I hope that's still going good. It's probably, probably pretty vast. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find all the best parts of all your videos and it's taking yeah. a while. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Somebody has got to try. Um, <laughs> uh, one thing I wanted to, to bring back up just for, just for shits and giggles is um, cheap marks. Yeah. Cheap marks, man. Will will be happening again. Uh, I have a couple people that want that are really into that, so yeah. definitely keep your eye out for that. I I love doing. Uh, I love talking wrestling, and I, I, I as you know, we we've we featured me on several of your wrestling podcasts because yes. of who I am. And if you don't know who I is, you better find out. You better find out. Yo, what's up, what's up dude? Um, you got to find out. Trust me. To, uh, check out Cheap Marks. It still it still exists. Uh, Jared nice. worked pretty hard on a um, a mini doc for me, uh, basically talking about the WrestleMania streak from the Undertaker. I know we're going off on a tangent here, but if we're gonna plug, we're gonna go. We're gonna plug far. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. It's been a, it's uh, been over a year. Yeah, Cheap Marks podcast coming back. I promise. I promise you, it's coming back. Can show you some love. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Hey, hey. 
I, I don't know if you're followed yet, but if you aren't, follow and subscribe to him on YouTube also. Show, show some love on YouTube, guys. Yep. But thank you thank you for uh, giving me the uh, the platform to bring back uh, Game Room. And yeah. uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you, if you joined real late, uh, he's going to have it um, reposted so you can check it out. Thank you, uh, Mr. Smith. Well, dude, awesome. Um, cool. Glad. But yeah, no, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, go ahead, and, go ahead, and send him home. Uh, thank everybody for watching and listening. I love all of you, even though I don't express it well, uh, because I am a Gen Zer. Shirt stays uh, on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, uh. Uh, Spike Spike Nather on on YouTube, Cheat Marks on YouTube as well. Go follow both of those. I will be putting a list up here very soon on that as new content. Um, and uh, I, I believe that's it for right now. Yep. Tune in. I don't want to say next week. I don't know. Uh, it, I I will put on social media the next time yeah. we do one of these. So we will do another. I promise. Yeah. We will do another. I love talking about video games. I love talking about wrestling. We'll do more stuff together. More collaborations. Oh yes. Oh yes. Lots. <laughs> lots more collaborations. I love collaborating with everybody. Oh yeah. Um, and of course, if you want to start a podcast, I'm the guy to go to because I have like five of these things now. So <laughs> I'm doing so much. <laughs> you're gonna need a you're gonna need a podcast uh, infinity gauntlet. Dude, I, I swear I'm like Conrad Thompson at this point. <laughs> so many podcasts. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Check us out. Po- uh, Weather's Media Podcast Network, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Wherever you get your podcasts at, that's where I'm at. Have a good day. We out.